In Pennsylvania right now, it's time for big game hunting. Now, some will hunt with modern bows and arrows or modern rifles and handguns with telescopic sights. Now, for others, the adventure of shooting sports takes them in a different direction. Looking back and finding fun, excitement, and pleasure in shooting and hunting with the old smoke pole. We're talking muzzle loaders and black powder with Mr. Black Powder himself right now when we go out in the open. Hey folks, welcome to this edition of Out in the Open. I'm Alex Zedock. And I'm Joanne Zedock, and we're coming to you from another one of our wonderful outdoor edu educational <laughs> and informative places. We're in Berks County, Pennsylvania. That's right. Different, we're going to be talking huh? with our friend Dave Erig, uh, who is known throughout the nation, I guess, as Mr. Black Powder. He's written, I don't know, a dozen books, and he's editor of, uh, of Muzzle Blast Magazine and Black Powder Magazine, and does all kinds of things. But we're going to be talking about Black Powder um today and black powder shooting and the history of black powder mm -hmm. and what it all means because mm -hmm. this is the hunting season oh it is the hunting season it seems like everybody likes to be in every category and you can't blame them it's, it's a lot of fun to be different today that's right you can <laughs> you can shoot black powder you can shoot your rifles you can do anything and then mm -hmm. of course uh, in december when we got some snow on the ground, it's a little bit colder. <laughs> we'll be doing the traditional muzzle loader footlock season, so that'll be interesting too. Exciting. Always fun, I think. You know, it's, it's the importance of getting out. It's just because it's winter, there's no reason not to That's get right. out there and enjoy That's right. what we've got to That's do. Right. And there's so much to learn and so many good things to learn about. Absolutely. So we've got our friend Dave Eric back here. He's uh -huh. preparing. So uh, why don't we go over and talk with Dave? Oh, All that's right? a good idea. Let's get going. All right. It's been years in the making. Tim Flanagan's landmark upland hunting masterpiece is finally here. This new coffee table style edition, The Birds of My Life, Grouse and Woodcock, is a lifetime of extraordinary hunting experience vividly brought to life by Wild River Press. At 11 by 8.5 inches, with 413 all-color pages, it contains rare photographs of grouse and woodcock, the result of spending thousands of hours in the field. This is the Upland Game Book to have and to give. Order your copy today directly from wildriverpress.com. Out in the Open is brought to you by statewide abstract and national abstract companies. For 35 years, the Pocono choice when you need a real estate title research company. And by Buck Hill Firearms in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania, the Northeast's number one online retailer of firearms, the Pennsylvania Outdoor Writers Association, an organization of professional communicators promoting Pennsylvania's natural resources, conservation, and our hunting and fishing heritage, by the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice for personal carry, and by the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you will find the largest retail showroom in the Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. Hey, folks, welcome back. Uh, our friend Dave Eric has agreed to talk to us about black powder and uh, flintlocks and muzzle loaders and all kinds of antique firearms. And you've got several of them here. Uh, Dave, how long have you been involved in black powder shooting? Since 1965, right at the end of the centennial of the Civil War. Okay, you got started. I got started with Civil War guns, old oh. Springfields. Okay. 
And from there, of course, Pennsylvania was making it known that we were going to be the first muzzle-loading deer hunting state in the Union. And uh, of course, I had to gear up with flintlocks after starting with percussion locks, and I fell in love with it. The clack boom and the smell of sulfur on the air, it just captured my imagination, Alex, and it's been 50 plus years I've been working at it. So why don't you tell our folks, I'm gonna step out of the picture here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have you just kinda of go through the history from there of your involvement with, uh, with black powder and how easy it is to shoot, how much fun it is to shoot and to do, and uh, we'll go from there, okay? Well, first of all, we're gonna talk about some of these old guns, all right? Let's do it. Sounds great. Hi, folks. Welcome to Berks County. Um, if you're wondering where that is, it's just a little bit west of Lehigh County, a little bit south of Schuylkill County, a little bit north of Montgomery County. And how did I end up here with my lovely wife? Well, there was definitely attraction there for both of us because we were both outdoor people. And we knew that after college, we didn't want to live in the suburbs and certainly not in the city because it would have hampered our style for being outside. So we found a nice small farm here in Berks County. And uh, over the 50 plus years that we've lived here, we've had a constant attraction for animals, whether they started with dogs and cats or later horses or wildlife. The mighty ringneck pheasant was really the first game animal I ever hunted and it, Berks County had thousands of them. And that grew into a desire to go after bigger game, deer. You know, the white-tailed deer is our state mammal. And it's been a great attraction for millions of people to just enjoy their sport. But for me, shooting a rifle with a scope on it was a bit too easy. I needed more challenge. And I met up with a good friend of mine, Dr. Gladding, who introduced me to Springfield Rifles. 1965, the end of the centennial for the Civil War. And he said, Dave, he said, you know, the flintlock deer season is gonna happen here in Pennsylvania. And my ears went up, seriously? What do I have to do and what's a flintlock? Well, starting from humble beginnings, I started out with a little Thompson center kit. A neighbor of mine said, let's go hunting. And hunting we did back in 1974, the first year of this season. We didn't have many opportunities because we were restricted to three days and only at 30 state game lands. Most of them were spread across the northern tier and not down here where I live. But in time, it caught on. Flintlock, muzzleloading, deer hunting has attracted not hundreds, not thousands, but hundreds of thousands of Pennsylvanians and almost an equal number to that coming in from out of state to enjoy this unique season that we have. Now, I'm not a collector of long rifles, but I do love old guns. And since my wife has Angstat relatives in her distant past, I was always looking for an Angstat. And one day at Dixon's Gunmakers Fair, I ran into a man who was selling a pre-revolutionary war flintlock in Adam Angstat, made in Kutztown. Well, I had to have this gun and it took a lot of sacrifice to get it, but it's been in my office ever since. I'm very, very proud that this gun has come home to Berks County because it went out to California to collectors before it came back to Pennsylvania to collectors. And I was just in the right place at the right time. And I guess that's how you start a collection. Well, in time, Another Maxitawney Township long rifle, another Angstat. This one's Peter Angstat, 1825. And you notice it's not a flintlock. It was originally, but was converted to percussion. Very common in the 1820s. Everybody wanted one of those cap guns. That's what they call them. Now, to you watching, probably think, well, a cap gun's what I used as a child. It was this paper roll that made noise when you hit it with the, the trigger's hammer. Um, cap gun here though is a little different. It uses fulminate to make fire inside the barrel of the muzzle-loading gun. In time, being involved with Jacobsburg Historical Society, I had to have a Henry. No, not an Oliver Henry that we see popularized today with the new Henry rifles. This is a William Henry family from Lancaster, pre-Revolutionary War. Now, not this gun, obviously, because it was percussion. 
but five generations of Henry's built muzzle loading guns, all one at a time custom guns. And they're just an amazing family, amazing history. Jacobsburg Historical Society was recognized by the state of Pennsylvania with a resolution for our efforts in preserving the history of muzzle loading guns and the Henry family. Well, that was in uh, 2012. Two years later, we did something miraculous. We actually got a gun declared a state gun. Just like the white-tailed deer is our state mammal and the rough grouse is our state bird and the hemlock tree is our state tree. Well, the flintlock rifle is now the state gun of Pennsylvania. And for good reason. It was made here first. It was made more in Pennsylvania than any other place. They were exported to the Kentucky territories. They opened up the West. In fact, even the fur trappers in the Rocky Mountains were using Pennsylvania rifles because you never ran out of caps. As long as you had a stone, the gun would spark and you would be able to harvest elk or buffalo or anybody who was trying to steal your furs from you. So this has been a sport of love, a sport of fun. When you fire black powder, it doesn't just go bang, it goes kabang. And then this big white cloud of smoke comes out and everybody inhales deeply. Ah, the nectar of sulfur on the air. It's just a fun gun to shoot. Real estate law is our business. I need an abstract title search company near Stroudsburg, Mount Pocono, Pocono Lake, Lake Naomi, Blake Slee. Call National Abstract at 570-646-4110. For offices near Scranton, Clark Summit, Lake Wall and Pompac, Lords Valley. And for general information, call 570-226-6229. For 35 years helping people with real estate, we're a Pocono experience you can't afford. Call 570-226-6229. Buff Hill Firearms, home of the $10 transfer, located at 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania. You never have to make an appointment. We're open 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Buck Hill Firearms is a full-service gun shop with on-site gunsmithing. Buck Hill Firearms NRA certified instructors are here to help you choose a gun that's right for you. Buck Hill Firearms, 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania, right next to the Mountain Home Diner. Check out the website at buckhillfirearms.com. Are you interested in becoming an outdoor communicator, writer, photographer, podcaster, or even a YouTuber? Here's some advice from some of Pennsylvania's top communicators. Or deer hunting or birding or whatever. I think if, if you're passionate about it, it'll show in your writing. So that would be my number one point. Good advice. Similarly, be sincere and uh, write to a variety of audience. Um, it's great to have your passions, and that definitely comes through in your writing every time. Readers who know the sport and know you're faking it will see through it. Um, defer to the expert when you don't know, when you aren't the expert in it. Always pull in those great contacts, make relationships, always be handing out business cards because the connection and the networking that you have, those opportunities here at conference and out in the real world um, are going to pay off because you never know when you need to make a phone call to get some insight to, to work into an article. What, what they've said are the first things that I thought of, but I'll, I'll add to this. Um, uh, I've got a shelf of books at home just on writing, period. William Zinzer has written a classic called On Writing Well. He's written another one that fewer people know of called Writing to Learn. It's amazing how much you learn when you've got to investigate a subject. Um, people say write what you know. Maybe that's a good starting place, but you can always learn something more when you're writing. I, I often learn more. I come away after writing something knowing more about it than I did starting out. So write, write what you're passionate about, but also write to learn. The fact that all four of us were going to mention the passion thing, that, that, must, that must really resonate. But in addition to that, I would say it's nice to be the smartest in the room. But you want to be the hardest worker. I think that's far more important. Be the hardest worker in the room. Don't miss deadlines. To translate a vision into reality is true innovation. At Car Arms, we not only manufacture some of the most advanced firearms on the market, we build assurance and reliability through a solid history of quality.
we pride ourselves on offering concealable, performance-driven firearm systems that exceed expectations time and time again. Car Arms, American ingenuity at its finest. Now that I've got your attention, you're probably wondering, how can I get involved with this? Do I have to dress like this? Well, what you're seeing is a costume clothing of the 18th century that has been popularized by a black powder shoot called a rendezvous. A rendezvous is actually a culture in which people not only make their own guns and knives and tomahawks, but they throw them in competition. Not only shoot the flintlock rifle, but they eat whatever they've taken with that gun. The clothing itself could be made of deer skin, it could be made of flax, cotton, dyed with sumac trees, maybe a calico shirt made from cotton. Uh, does everybody carry around a knife around on their neck? Well, yes, because I use it as a patch knife to cut the cloth that goes around the round bullet that fits down the muzzle loader. Uh, why do I have a feather there? I'll tell you later. What about the bear claws? Well, the bear didn't need them anymore after he met up with Pennsylvania's state rifle, the flintlock rifle. But it is a costume that is necessary to go and participate in these giant black powder shoots called rendezvous. And you might ask, well, how often are these rendezvous held? Well, they're held all over the state and in fact, all over the country. Way back in the year 1933, the same year that the Philadelphia Eagle football team got started, so did the National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association. And they put out a magazine, a very fine magazine called Muzzle Blast, that is filled with history, filled with different ignitions, filled with different types of rifles, pistols, shotguns, and all the competitions, hunting articles, and everything else. And I'm proud to be the editor of this magazine, as you can tell. But enough about here I am. Let's talk about how we can get you in to shooting. And we're going to go to the range next. Joanne, what I'm going to do is to load up this muzzle loader, this 54 caliber flintlock muzzle loader. And we have to do it in a very specific order. First the powder, then the ball. First the powder, then the ball. Boy, if you ever get for huddled and put the ball down first with the powder on top, not only will that not shoot, it'll never shoot again until you go through the painful process of digging out the lead ball. So first the powder. Now, the powder we're talking about is black powder. Mm -hmm. Some people call it gunpowder, but today gunpowder includes a myriad of powders. It includes smokeless, it includes semi-smokeless, and so it's just not a good term. Mm -hmm. The legal term is black powder, mm -hmm. and it gets that name from the result of the carbon in the mixture. It's a very simple mixture. Mm -hmm. Carbon, like you cook hamburgers and hot dogs within a briquette. <laughs> Sulfur, which is that foul odor that it gives off after you shoot, and then the saltpeter, which is nothing more than potassium nitrate, stuff we turn pork into ham with. Mm -hmm. So those three things mixed together, crushed, put through a screen, and the end result is something that is a powder and black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the camera, we got extra. <laughs> it kind of looks blue. In the light, it does, doesn't it? Yes, it does. How about that? One of the things about black powder is it's measured by volume, which means it's not as precise a load as you see in a 306 or a seven millimeter Magnum. Um, we're using 90 grains here, which is a hunting load for this gun. And what I'm doing is first the powder down the, down barrel. the barrel. Mm -hmm. And if a few grains spill on the ground, doesn't really matter that much. <laughs> now, if I were shooting targets at the national range, it would matter a lot, but not here at my home. Okay, first the powder, then the ball. And the ball that I'm talking about is nothing more than a round orb of lead. That's if I find it. This purse is like a lady's purse. You can never find what you're looking for. There we go. When people hear 54 caliber, they think, oh my God, that's huge. 50 calibers were, were used 
in World War II to knock airplanes out of the sky. <laughs> well, yeah, but that was a modern bullet with right. modern smokeless powder and uh, ballistics were quite different. Patch material can be anything from bed ticking mm -hmm. to a shirt, mm -hmm. but it's got to be cotton. Because if you use any kind of polyester for a patch, it, thing, it yeah. melts inside the barrel. Oh, Not good. Mm -hmm. Not good at all. Plus the patch is dry, which means it needs to be lubricated. Now it's interesting to note on these early muzzle loaders, mm -hmm. some had sliding wooden patch box covers like this Jaeger. Mm -hmm. Some have brass, which was a Pennsylvania addition mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Jaeger to turn it into our Pennsylvania rifle. Mm -hmm. And some of them just have round boxes in the back. They were called cap boxes for holding percussion caps. Mm -hmm. But regardless, instead of patches being in there, most of the time they kept grease, okay. like bear grease, right. pork fat, sheep tallow, mm -hmm. or good old fashioned Saliva. Spit patch, saliva. <laughs> Mighty slippery stuff as long as you shoot it right away. <laughs> Yuck. Mm, tastes yummy. <laughs> we want to put the flat part, see a little flat mark right there? Mm -hmm. That's the sprue. When that thing was put in the mold, it was the part that was sheared off at the top to make a round ball. Okay. And they're somewhat difficult to get started down the barrel, so it helps to have a short starter. Now, a lot of researchers say that short starters did not exist in the 18th century. Mm -hmm. Well, that's for the most part true. Mm -hmm. Not totally, but for the most part. Mm -hmm. So how'd they get the ball down the barrel? Thank you for asking that question. <laughs> They got the ball down the barrel because they coned the top of the muzzle, making it wider at the top right. and then smaller as it got to the right. caliber size mm -hmm. of the ball. Right. And everybody knows what this is. Mm -hmm. This is the ramrod mm -hmm. because it does exactly that. It rams everything home. It finishes the job. First the powder, then the ball. Well, that's only half the story. Now we have to go to the other end of the muzzle loader, the breech, and we have to open up the touch hole. That's a little hole on the side of the rifle. Just a teeny tiny hole. Oh. Yeah. And that's where the fire is going to breathe life into the powder inside the barrel, okay. firing it down range. Okay. So if you want to give me some space, I'm going to prime and fire this piece. And you definitely don't want to be on the right side of the flintlock because there's a lot of gas exiting and it would burn it, leave little black marks all over your face, which is I'm not good. Go, I'm going to go sit over here. Good idea. <laughs> Show me how it goes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. We have a loaded barrel. Now we put prime in. What does that mean? Well, it's the same black powder as the stuff in the barrel but it's smaller in size. It's half again smaller than what's loaded down the muzzle. And we have to do one other thing, and that is make sure the touch hole is open on the side. Very, very important, because if you don't have an open touch hole, you can't get the fire to lick inside and set off the powder train. And it doesn't take a lot of priming powder. In fact, one good hint for you hunters out there, don't fill up the whole pan with powder because what you're doing is you're making a cannon fuse instead of a bang, you get a kaboom. And a lot of times you'll flinch off target. So half a pan of powder, all you need. Okay, now we're ready to shoot. I hope you enjoyed your time spent with us this afternoon. And for more information and to get you started safely and in the right direction so you can really enjoy this sport, go online to www.nmlra.org and take a look at us. We have Muzzle Blast Magazine. We have electronic magazines. We have all kinds of products to help you shoot and have a wonderful day of field. It's been years in the making. Tim Flanagan's landmark Upland hunting masterpiece is finally here. 
This new coffee table style edition, The Birds of My Life, Grouse and Woodcock, is a lifetime of extraordinary hunting experience vividly brought to life by Wild River Press. At 11 by 8.5 inches, with 413 all-color pages, it contains rare photographs of grouse and woodcock, the result of spending thousands of hours in the field. This is the Upland Game Book to have and to give. Order your copy today directly from wildriverpress.com. Out in the Open is brought to you by Statewide Abstract and National Abstract Companies. For 35 years, the Pocono choice when you need a real estate title research company. And by Buck Hill Firearms in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania, the Northeast number one online retailer of firearms. The Pennsylvania Outdoor Writers Association, an organization of professional communicators promoting Pennsylvania's natural resources, conservation, and our hunting and fishing heritage. By the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice for personal carry. And by the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you will find the largest retail showroom in the Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. Another great show with uh, our friend Dave Eric. I think it was very, very interesting. I love what they call the muzzle loader, <laughs> the smoke. <laughs> well, the smoke, you know, they call it the smoke pole. And, of course, you see why when you see some of the stuff that we did, right. you know. Uh, right. it's, it's really a smoke pole. Dave's written several books. You can get them uh, online, eBay. Uh, I think they're available, but muzzle loading deer and turkey is one of oh, them. The yeah. other one is, what's that one? That's black powder uh, uh, white tails. And he is the editor of Muzzle Blast magazine. And if you're interested in the uh, National Muzzle Loading Rifle Association, of course, you can go online and get more information and enjoy the sport as much as uh, as much as we do and everybody right. else does. You know, it's fun shooting. It is. It's very different than just your regular rifles or your fancy <laughs> rifles. It's very, very different. And I, I keep thinking about this, that if, if you shoot, you have to clear the smoke to see if you got. <laughs> you also learned that you have to pull your hair back, right? right. Uh, and it gets good to tie it all back or wear a hat or a scarf yes. or something over your hair because there is a little uh, little flame and fire there. That's right. <laughs> and, and you wear earplugs, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, we hope you enjoyed the show. We enjoyed bringing it to you. So uh, we'll be here. We'll be somewhere. But you can bet. We're going to be out in the open. Absolutely.